Hey man, congratulations. So Thanks, finally City. Yeah, you've received the well the well deserved offer. <laughs> it was it was a long journey, but you know in the end, uh patience, you know, it worth it worth the patience and the perceiveness of all this all yeah, this situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, awesome. So you're joining McKinsey in Greece, in Athens, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you mentioned it. How was this whole recruiting process for you during this, yeah, more or less crazy year that we are still in? Well, my recruiting process was a little bit weird because I had already done my first round uh, before Corona hit, so it was yeah. something around in the end of January, mm. and uh, you know, I was I was preparing. I I was, you know, in the same in the same uh, thing that I did for my, I did almost the same thing that I did for my first round, and then Corona hit it, and everything was frozen. Yeah. So from then, from the beginning of March till uh, September, there was almost no uh, advancements in my process, mm. and uh, you know, it was it was a long a long time, and uh, there were a lot of problems because I didn't know, okay. Perhaps. So you didn't get you didn't get a date for your final round. No, there was uh, every month there was you know communication with HR, but they weren't able to propose a date because yeah. they have froze uh, you know all the they have frozen all this all the recruiting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, but then finally they gave you a date. <laughs> Luckily. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was just you know one week ago, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was it was in, in separate dates also because they didn't they weren't able you know to accommodate all of them in the same day. Mm -hmm. So, how did this then feel? So, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, we prepared uh, towards these, these final rounds, but how did the interviews then feel? I mean, uh, I guess you talked to partners, right? Yeah, exactly. Partners and, you know, especially the, the my last the last guy was a very senior partner. He's a lot of years, more than 15 years in the firm and in this yep. office. And, yep. uh, you know, he, did, he's, he was a lot of uh, more fluid in his you know, his approach in KZX uh, from the others. Yeah. How did this feel? Uh, to be honest, because I've I've put a lot of, you know, time to prepare, you know, I used my time, I had a lot of time, so I've put some time to prepare. Uh, it was, I didn't, I was expecting to be, you know, to have, you know, some stress and all of that, but it was mm -hmm. more of, a, of an excite, excitement feeling. So, although I knew that, okay, now, now you're getting assessed, mm -hmm. uh, those guys made the you know the situation me feel very comfortable and combining with the fact that I have I, I, I was prepared so I had in my mind that okay you have done a lot of preparation you have done the best uh, thing that you could uh, so it was it wasn't so stressed as I was expecting it was a very nice experience yeah yeah actually that's that's quite typical um, especially then for the more senior guys who interview you. Um, um, because um, at the end of the day, McKinsey does not believe in stress interviews, right? Uh, they don't believe that this is really giving them additional insight, right? And um, what is always a good sign in the final round is if, um, yeah, it's, it feels more like a conversation, because this is then a good sign in terms of they already like you and they don't really have an area that they want to pinpoint on and where they want to test you, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. That was the case, I, I agree with you, CD. That was from my experience also. Yeah, Very conversational. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, in all the preparation we did together, right? So we have uh, extensively uh, covered the principles of, of, of case solving, right? Um, mm -hmm. And also uh, the personal experience interview. So, and I mean, as you know, most candidates are uh, still approaching cases with frameworks, right? So what is what is usually um, proposed in the very popular books out there, like Case in Point and so on, um, because this is essentially the mainstream that is more or less exactly. brainwashing most candidates, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, we have now used this long time that you had uh, until your final round to mm -hmm. really dismantle cases, to dismantle case questions and to um, uh, essentially work out how to always discuss the core of the issue, right? And exactly. to go to the principles of value creation in all these case questions, uh, because contrary to what, what most people think, there are no 16 or 20 case types out there, right? <laughs> it's much less than that. So um, how did this freedom from frameworks help you uh, in addressing uh, the cases at McKinsey then? 
Wow, yeah, that's that's a very very great question because I think this is the most decisive. As I've written in my, you know, when I communicated to you the decision that I, I you know, I was offered uh, the position. Yeah. Uh, I was one of these guys. I think that anybody that starts to do cases begins to do cases. Do, yeah, does cases. So, uh, you you go through case books or you go through an online program and. Uh, yeah. You know, th this was the this was my situation. You know, in the middle of Corona, let's say till May. So I was the guy that had a lot of frameworks in his mind. So I had uh, a framework for market entry, for product launch, yeah. uh, for for all of these cases. Uh, but uh, this is where I understood that okay, this is not something. This has reached a plateau. And I have also, I, I want to tell here now that I have also practiced with a lot of people. So I have practiced with mm. more than 80 people. Mm. And uh, you know, it's it's very easy to say that okay, I got it now. I don't have anything to you know. And these people got offers, not people, random people, people that yep. got offered from uh, the U.S. You know, to mm -hmm. to, to Asia. Mm -hmm. So I think it was very it it was easy to say that okay, I'm okay now. I'm gonna keep it like this. And uh, mm -hmm. when they call me, uh, you know, let's do this. But this is when I I started searching for something that will step up my game. Let's say something yep. like this. Yeah. And it's very difficult to find something in the internet because there are, there's a lot of you know coaching offered and. And uh, I think what what one needs to do uh, in order to make an educated decision, because this is an investment when they try, you know, to mentor, when they choose to mentor, both of time and and money. Absolutely. Uh, they need to do their research. So you need to find to to look at answers from uh, coaches or you know some material they have. Mm -hmm. And I did I did this I did this this thing I did the research. So I I reached the point and I saw that. Almost, I don't want to be very, you know, absolute, but I know it's 95% of uh, what I was seeing as coaching was essentially the same thing that I did up to this point. So at this point, I was not so positive on coaching. But then, uh, luckily, I, I got in touch with ex mentors of yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw they were very, you know, oh, this is great. You should do this and all of that. And I saw, oh, why? So well, something is different here. Yeah. And, I, you know, I speeded up my research. I looked at all your nonsense, and then I said, "Okay, now I have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I have either to stay at the same thing that, as I'm now, and mm -hmm. okay, I have already passed my first round, so you can easily say, ah, oh, don't bother, not mother, don't, no need yep. to spend money.' Yep. But at the other time, we have Corona now, and I want also to stress here that I was from other reasons. I was unemployed, and this is something for other people to know that this is yep. not discouraging. I was unemployed for almost one year due to family yep. reasons. Yep. So I said the the best thing that I can do now is to you know put my effort, make a very little investment compared to what investment you can do with masters and all of that and education mm. and that. Yep. And uh, yeah, we we arranged the call and uh, we started working together. And uh, in the three. MBB structuring, you know, the structure, the first three sessions on, on yep. structure. I, uh, from the from the first session, you know, when we closed, I understood that, okay, this is a very good choice because yep. everything everything that I had is, is not that the knowledge that I already had was, you know, uh, useless, but everything was put in a perfect perspective. So I was able to combine everything and make this bridge, as you said, you know, with a, with a, with initial target. So, what was added is a more high level, so three mm. things, a more high level approach, secondly, yep. the fundamentals that you, you're getting, you know, you teach, and uh, of course, being very specific and very prioritized, which is especially for last round cases, this makes a difference. This is my experience, how you prioritize things really yep. make a difference in setting the tone for the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But we've not only uh, um, concentrated on case solving, right, mm -hmm. and establishing the principles of really approaching strategic questions, but we've also spent quite some effort on uh, the personal experience interview, oh, right? Because exactly. this is a special kind at McKinsey. Exactly, yeah. So we did this, and okay, we did these sessions, and I, just to finish this part, mm -hmm. uh, I went through the material every you know week and every time yeah. I, I found new things it's it's not something you know like you do a mock session and you calibrate your performance it's something that you can also mine and mine things every time you get back you know uh, I thought about okay I have I have also done this step why not do something with personal experience although I had also already used stories I had already yeah. passed this it was the same thing yeah. uh, and so here was you know also that uh, I got back to you and we did this, the first session on PI and uh, I, I have to mention that the perception that I had about what is exactly assessed and what is yeah. exactly asked yeah. was, to was totally wrong. Yeah. 
Yes. And they have used material. Yes. I want I want to specify here, uh, you know, to, to mention that they have all also used material, paid material online mm -hmm. uh, in, for my first round. Yep. And uh, it, this was a waste of time more and of money in the second mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So it was completely different. So what we what we what you've explained to me about all this, this personal experience, entrepreneurial drive and mm -hmm. leadership, mm -hmm. I completely restructured the stories and they were very focused to what is asked. And here I want to, to mention my feeling was that once you have the stories ready, uh, they are ready, finito. You don't have to worry about anything. So yeah. you, you craft your stories, you think about them, and then you get into the interview. You know that you have covered everything in your mind. Yeah. You cannot get you know caught yeah. by, by, you know, by something that you haven't worked. And you set the tone because you build a rapport. If you start very good uh, with the personal experience, mm. then the whole case will go better. So exactly. Exactly. It is very because the interview, the interviewer is already impressed, so he wants yeah. you to be successful, right? Because you are very, you know, I was very, how to say, uh, very focused on what to to mention and what to, uh, you know, present more, what to mm. put my my focus on while mm. presenting the cases. While mm. in my first round cases, I had more of a, you know, direction from the interviewer. So, okay, of course, I didn't focus a lot of the context, but I was, I wasn't focusing. More, I wasn't focusing, let's say, not more. I, I wasn't at all focusing on how I came to my decisions or, or how I analyze the situations, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is 60-70% uh, of my, my last round personal experience stories were on the why, how, what you thought, how you assessed that mm -hmm. this decision that you were about to take uh, would have this, uh, you know, this outcome and all of that. Yeah. So this was very heavily focused on the why, what yeah. was in your mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And really understanding what they're trying to find out and why they're trying to find out, right? This helps you to keep the focus on the things that are really important, right? And by the way, uh, this is the reason why the STAR framework that is very, very popular out there, uh, um, uh, why this framework is not very good for McKinsey stories, right? Because it jumps over this most important thing. Yeah, I agree. Parade, I think uh, we have yeah. also discussed yeah. it. Parade, Parade is, is a greater option, but mm -hmm. what worked better for me? Oh, yeah. I had this conceptually, but what, what worked better is to have, okay, one sentence, a very general, you know, yes. description. Then problem, what mm -hmm. was, or not a little se one, two sentences about the problem, mm -hmm. one, two for the, the situation and mm -hmm. my role. And then I approach it like a case. So this were the yes. problem, this is what yes. I did. I, I got completely, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't, you know, focusing on I have parade in my mind and all of that. No, I no, was no. doing it like the case. So exactly. like the case, you have the, the context, you have the problem mm -hmm. and you, you mention what, what are you going to do, like the framework, yes. and then you yes. go into your framework. So this was how I, I had it mapped in my mind for each of my mm -hmm. stories. Exactly. That, that's, uh, if you remember, right, I also told you that a good PEI story is like telling a story about how you solved a case. Exactly. So yeah, it's the principles are completely the same, and now you, as you, as you do this, you see that I have these two different assessment, you know, uh, the yep. PI and the case interview, but fundamentally they're the same thing. But the first one has to do the personal experience on your know, social things, you know, interactions or more soft skills, and the second one is more about problem solving and yep. all of of the yep. business sense and all that. But it's yep. the same. Yeah, yeah, great. So. Um, there's one more point I want to touch upon um, because um, what I'm usually doing with my mentees is uh, after we have established the basic principles, right? Uh, uh, once you are more or less stable in, in your understanding of how you need to approach these, uh, these interviews, then um, I'm establishing contacts between different mentees of mine who are uh, on, the, mm -hmm. on, a, on a similar level, right? And uh, you have also practiced with, uh, uh, with, with uh, mentees or with other mentees of mine, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, and I mean, now compare this to quote unquote normal candidates that you would, uh, uh, that you would practice with, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, what would you say? How, how helpful has this been in order to mm -hmm. also uh, essentially up your game and make you, make you ready, right? Both yeah. technically and maybe also mentally. Yeah, that, that, that's a very good question because I, after doing, you know, the first sessions with you, uh, and this is something that every candidate needs to know. Uh, there is coming up when we do cases with you. So you go then to your other other you know candidates that you were preparing, and you start to explain some things. And 
there is, you know, there's no understanding. So there are some things that you run this, you know, the diagnostic cases and the strategic mm -hmm. cases and, oh, this is wrong. Why you do this? This is wrong. <laughs> you should five areas with four buckets in it. And so you say here is, you, there is so where. So you run into the problem, yeah, that, this the is a problem. that you practice with don't understand how to actually approach a case, right? Yeah. So they stick to the book knowledge, to how they learned it from Case in Point or Victor Chang. And then your problem is that you are spending a lot of energy explaining. on trying to either explain or even trying to ignore their feedback. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it, I think it's it's more difficult to ignore than to explain your logic because if you ignore you, 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 you know, you say, oh, why so and that. But yeah, this was a problem. So what we did is that, uh, you know, I worked with a great guy and uh, we not only did a lot of cases and, and many of yours, mm -hmm. but we've also, you know, we, we had three to four sessions. After each session, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about structures and we came up, okay, this is, oh, what's your opinion on this? And what's your opinion on this? And what's your, and we yeah. did a lot of, you know, we, we got a lot of extra steps, not yeah. just basic, just to have their opinion. And uh, we also talked about the personal experience and uh, we were in the same time uh, with this guy. Uh, he was preparing for BCG and for McKinsey also. He's going to have he, and he's going to have his McKinsey interview soon. So this was uh, I, I, I almost, you know, practice only with him during my last week because yep. we understood the principles at a very, very good level, both of us. Yep. Yep. And uh, we were able, you know, to focus on what was needed and uh, Exactly, remember, because you I, were on the same level, right? Both of you yeah. were essentially in the last days before the interviews. So, of course, you had a good match there. Exactly. Right? And when he got an offer, you know, from BCG and uh, uh, he, because he's in Scandinavia, uh, there the situation, you know, I had my interviews one each day. It yeah. was more, more extended, but I was able to focus only on one interview. So, this was a, a, something that I got advantage. He had all from the test the final rounds in the same day so it was yep. way more intense but uh, when we talked we know and he got the offer on the same day i said okay this one more you know him that this not works, only right? not <laughs> only does this works but you know this was a very very ex extensive you know uh, procedure for him and uh, he got the offer you know from bcg so th that's great and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everything will work fine with mckinsey also so this also gave me a little boost a more boost so i said okay confidence no no you know go to the interviews and you are the guru but you are confident mm -hmm. and uh, then i go I, I want to mention here that when you have this approach when the interviewer is going to challenge you because one of the three interviewers in the last interview will surely challenge you a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you have a very clear thought, you are able to stand and explain your thinking in every situation. And this is exactly, and especially for my senior partner, the senior partner yeah. has challenged me, you know, challenged me over, over 25 times. A lot of, a lot of follow-up questions. You, one and a half hour interviews, I was yeah. completely exhausted after this interview. But <laughs> I had in my mind, you know, these principles that everything that I did and everything that I said was uh, connected to the, to, you know, to the goal and the initial, you know, fundamentals. So yep. I was able to connect it and this was very, uh, very good for me, for my confidence and for how I, will, I communicated. Yeah, exactly. And I can guarantee you this is something that interviewers at McKinsey are not used to see in candidates, right? So I can guarantee you that you probably really stood out. I mean, that's why they gave you an offer. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I I agree with you and not not just to say that, okay, I did a very good, uh, you know, decision, but I have worked a lot with the previous status quo, let's say, I have, I have put a lot of work before online with, uh, okay, I have market entry, so I'm going to look at four areas with five things <laughs> and, uh, okay, where would you like to look at next? I would look, let's say, this was my approach. I look at the market attractiveness and what mm. exactly is this? So, uh, it's, uh, I have worked a lot on this uh, yeah. model, so yeah. I, from my, I, can, I can talk from my personal experience, how things are way, 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 way clearer and way, uh, let's say they show more mature in your thinking. Yes, 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 exactly. Because this is exactly the problem that most candidates have, that they, they start their thinking from, oh, first I need to understand the market and I need to understand the customer, right? And because this is what the usual mainstream books are telling people to do, 
and they don't realize that this thinking corresponds to a very immature and very junior way of looking at things. And what, what we have essentially uh, um, worked out together is um, to think through the question like a senior strategy consultant, essentially looking at it like a partner. And this is something that is so rare for interviewers that, I mean, if you show this, then it's 50% of the game, yeah. right? Because then you have to really uh, mess up the rest of the interview in order for them to not want you, right? Yeah, and um, uh, this is on my second on my second interview. Mm -hmm. I had the very atypical. It was not the case, no profit. It was, it was something. It was something that I just, you know, for a few seconds, I thought about these principles and I used these mm -hmm. principles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had the structure. Then I had a very demanding uh, graph. And I was expecting to start and, you know, dive into calculations. And, yeah. you know, it was only 20 minutes and the interviewer came back and told me, okay, uh, let's do a recommendation. And I said, no calculations for the day, you yeah. know, I said to myself. So I think that, uh, and I, I, I knew that they do a lot of calculations uh, in this office, in the, yeah. you know, in the final round. So I was very prepared for this yeah. and I, I did no calculations. So I, I, I really believe that this was due to uh, the very good structure that I had initially I, I really believe this because oh, i i did you know i know that uh, this uh, you know these interviewers give a lot of numbers and they stress you with these numbers they want to yeah. see how you react in pressure yeah. so yeah i think that the structures play the major role fantastic so um congratulations again um, thanks Didi. and i'm sure um uh, by the way when, when do you start do you know already uh i'm gonna start uh, in the first quarter of 2021 of course okay. and uh, almost you know around february yeah mm -hmm. and uh, from from the following because i was informed yesterday i will have you know the contacts with hr to accommodate this yeah mm -hmm. okay fantastic so Soon uh, congrats i'm sure you will uh, essentially have a great career there it's a it's a fantastic firm right it's a, it's a, it's an awesome place to start a career it's an awesome place to essentially set yourself up for whatever you want to do right mm -hmm. whether you want to stay there long term or whether you want to do something else or whether some random thing will happen where like in my case uh, the the football league comes and and, <laughs> and wants, the, wants you to have their strategy right uh, these are the kind the you almost only get when you are when you are working at these very high level strategy consulting firms. So um, congratulations. Um, um, have a have a great time until you start. Right. Use, yeah, the, you use start. the last uh, <laughs> months in freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of work, uh, you know, coming. But yes. you know, this is something we you know I've worked for, so I'm I'm really you know I'm really motivated to to do this. Cool. Awesome. Then okay. have a good one. Cheers. Thanks, Idi. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.